So hello everyone, my name is Andrea Nicolau and today we'll be going through chapter F2.2. We'll be talking about accuracy assessment. The outline is as follows. We'll have a quick chapter overview, then talk a little bit about theory behind accuracy assessment, and then finally go into the practicum where we'll look into the scripts prepared for this slide, uh, for this chapter, sorry. You can access these slides using this bit.ly link, so it's just slides on the score F22. And we'll start with the chapter overview. So the goal of this chapter is to assess the accuracy of an image. As learning outcomes, we expect the user to learn how to perform accuracy assessment using uh, Earth Engine, to understand how to generate and read a confusion matrix. And we'll talk about confusion matrix in detail. Also understand overall accuracy and the kappa coefficient and other metrics as well, which is uh, users and producers accuracy and also omission and commission errors. These all come out of the confusion matrix. So I'll be talking about this in a minute. And um, this chapter assumes you know how to create a graph using the UI.chart and also perform a supervised random forest image classification, which was the topic of the previous chapter um, that we walked um, users through last week. So you can also check that recording if you missed that. So a little bit um, about the theory of um, accuracy assessment. Every time we uh, classify an image like um, we did in chapter F2.1, we wonder right, um, how good is this map, right? How correctly classified um, are the pixels in the map? And does this reflect um, reality? Especially, you know, every time we are working with remote sensing products, um, whatever the output is of the classification, it's just a generalization of, of reality. So if you're using this map for scientific purposes or for policy making, for example, we need to make sure that um, this map is good, right? So people can um, take decisions uh, based on the map. So we need high accuracy in order to use this map for, for important um, decision making. So we, the main um, way we do this in this chapter will be using a confusion matrix. This is also called an uh, error matrix. So you see confusion and error matrix, um, these two terms being used. And uh, the confusion matrix describes the quality of a classification by comparing the predicted values to the actual value. So once we have a classified map, we need to make sure that you know, uh, if those pixels actually um, reflect what's on the ground. Um, so here's an example of a very simple confusion matrix. Um, in this case, you could, we have just these two classes, positive and negative. So we have predicted values, which would be the pixels classified in the image, right? You have, you have pixels labeled as positive, for example, or negative. Or another example, it could be a binary classification. You have a image classified into forest and non-forest. So pixels just classified as forest, labeled forest, and other pixels classified as non-forest. So you can interpret the positive here as forest and negative as non-forest, for example. So the predicted values here on the left side and actual values here at the top. And then um, the middle here is what it's important because these would be the number of pixels. For example, here you have TP, which is the true positive. So pixels that were predicted as forest that are actually forest on the ground. So that were correctly classified here. So it's the TP. You could also have um, pixels classified as forest. So here in this line, this FB false positive because they were classified as positive, but um, they're actually non-forest, for example, or negative. So this would be um, errors in the classification. And the same for the other class. Um, the false negative here would be pixels classified um, as negative, but in reality, they are positive. And true negative pixels classified as negative, but they're actually negative as well. So corrected values. Um, here's just a summary. So again, just to recap, true positive classified as positive and the actual class is positive. You could also read this as you know, forest and forest. False positive classified as positive and the actual class is negative. 
false negative classified as negative and the actual class is positive and true negative classified as negative and the actual class um, is negative. This is an example. So this is a confusion matrix that is actually from the code, um, I believe in the, in the chapter. So here, for example, we have um, a sample size of a thousand pixels. So from our map, we extract a thousand pixels and looked at the predicted values versus the actual values. And you can see, for example, that 300, 307 pixels were classified as positive and they're actually positive. Here for the other class, for the negative class, six, 661 pixels were classified correctly. And then we have some errors here. So 14 pixels were wrongly classified as negative and 18 pixels um, as well for the positive. Um, you can also think of these, so this is very simple, it's just a binary example, but we, in chapter F2.1, we did for different um, classes, right? So you can have more columns and rows here depending on how many classes um, you have. So, and you can extract many uh, metrics from this confusion matrix. One of them is the overall accuracy. So um, what's the proportion of the reference data that was classified correctly? And this is done by um, summing up the true positives and true negatives. So the correctly classified pixels divide by the sample size. Um, so here, for example, in that example we gave in the table, it's pretty much taking the diagonal. So taking all the correctly classified pixels, so the 307 here and the 661 here, summing that up and dividing by the number of your uh, sample size, which is a thousand. Here we, again, we're, it's a very simple example. There are um, robust protocols to calculate the sample size to do an accuracy assessment. But here, just for learning purposes, we'll do just a um, you know, simple 1,000 points in this example. And also in the uh, code we'll go through, um, we use 400 pixels. But there, I want you to be aware that there are um, ways to calculate you know, how many pixels do I need to validate a map? There are ways to, to, to calculate that number, a good number that is statistically significant, but we won't be going through that today, but I, we do have um, references for you to check out uh, later. So this is just for learning purposes. So this is, would be um, the overall accuracy. So 307 plus 661 divided by 1,000, the map uh, has an overall accuracy of 96.8%, which is pretty high. Another metric we could take is the producer's accuracy. People might also know this as recall. And the producer's accuracy is the accuracy of the map from the point of view of the map maker, which is you know, the producers, the producer. And um, the producer's accuracy for a given class tell us the proportion of the pixels in that class that were correctly classified. So it's basically from all the pixels classified in to that uh, class, how many of them were correctly uh, classified. And um, depending on, on the class you're looking at, for example, if you're looking at the positive or the forest class, it's the true positive divided by true, po true positive plus false negative. If it's for the negative class or the non-forest class, for example, it's true negative divided by true negative plus um, false positive. And if you have more classes that will also um, you know, change here the terms. You will, you have more than true positive and 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 um, true negative and false positive and false negative. You, you'd have more terms, right? These are just for when you have two classes. Users accuracy is uh, also called precision. Right? Some people might know this is precision, or consumers accuracy as well is the accuracy of the map from the point of view of the of a map users. Of a map user. So the user's accuracy for a given class tells us the proportion of the pixels identified on the map as being that class. They're actually in that class on the ground. So again, so producers is from the pixels classified as forest, how many of them were correctly classified? And this one uses dippings from the pixels on the map that are forest, how many of them are classified as forest, right? And forest is just one class example. It could be non-forest, it could be positive, negative, it could be um, water or other class. 
So the terms here change a little bit. Um, for the forest class, for example, it'd be true positive divided by true positive plus false positive. And for the non-forest class or negative class, true negative divided by true negative plus false negative. And here's easier to visualize. So if you recall, overall accuracy was pretty much taking that diagonal. So the, the two um, um, squares here, boxes with the corrected pixels and divided by the sample size. Here for users accuracy, for example, I'm highlighting here the positive class. So from all the pixels that were classified into positive, um, we take the correctly classified ones and divide by the total number of pixels, which is 325. So these two summed up together. And you can see for this class, we have 94.5% um, of accuracy. And then for producers accuracy, we take a look at the actual values instead. So from all the pixels on the map that are actually um, positive, how many of them were correctly classified? So it'd be 307 divided by the sum of these two, which is 321. So we have 95.6% of producers accuracy for the forest class. And then for the negative class or for the non-forest class, for example, you do the same. For users accuracy, you would take um, the 661 here and divide by 675, and then you have this result. And then for um, producers accuracy, you take 661 and divide by 67, um, 679, yes. It's a little hard um, to visualize, but um, the, the basic idea is that for the um, producers accuracy, you take all the pixels classified into that class and see how many are correctly classified. And you use accuracy, all pixels that are actually that class, how many were classified as that class. Then you have um, omission errors. So we looked into accuracies. Now we have errors as well. Omission errors refer to the reference pixels that were left out or omitted. That's what why it's called omitted. So that were left out of the correct class in the classified map. So for example, the 18 here and, and 14 would be examples of errors. An error of omission in one class will be counted as an error of commission, which we'll see now in the class. And omission errors are complementary to the producer's accuracy. So here's the formula. Omission errors is 100% minus the, the percent that you got from the producer's um, accuracy. And commission error, so it's the same idea. Um, if you missed a, a pixel into that class, it was omitted, but then that pixel was also committed into another class. So commission errors refer to the class pixels that were honestly classified in the map and are complementary to the user's accuracy. So commission error will be 100% minus um, the user's accuracy. And finally, we also have the kappa coefficient. It's also, low, also very, um, it's, it's widely used in, in image classification to assess a map as well. And it evaluates how well the classification performed as compared to random. And usually the va values here vary from minus one to one. A negative value indicates that the classification is worse than a random assignment of categories. And a value of zero indicates that the classification is no better or worse than random. And positive values indicate that classification is better um, than random. So it's just uh, comparing the classification um, that we have to a random assignment of, 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 um, of classes. So it could be like just, you know, for each pixel, you just um, throw a coin and see if it's class A and B. Um, so it's a coefficient that compares um, um, the accuracy to random. And you can see the formula here. So kappa coefficient is calculated as observed accuracy minus the chance agreement divided by one uh, minus chance agreement. And chance agreement is calculated as the sum of the products of row and column totals for each class. And the observed accuracy is the overall um, accuracy. So here um, in this formula, over uh, observed accuracy would be, if I go back here, it would be this accuracy here, 96.8. Um, and then chance agreement 
as it says here, the sum of, of the product of the row and column totals for each class. So it's pretty much um, what is here um, in this uh, image here. So we take the, um, the, the column total here for the positive class and the um, row total here of the positive class, three to one and three to five, um, and make the product of these two and then sum with the product of the row and columns of the negative class as well. So six, seven, nine and six, seven, five, the product of it, and then sum these two values together. So you have your chance um, agreement. So both here at the top here, and then here at the bottom. And with that, you get a um, coefficient as well. 